In the age of productions with a small crew and fast turnaround times, it's super handy to have an app to control your camera. So today we are going to be looking at three apps for Android to control the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Let's get into it. So this whole video was prompted by a commenter on our last video about the Blackmagic versus the Sony FX9. And basically they said that I forgot to talk about the app to control the camera. At that stage, I hadn't even looked into an app for the Blackmagic because the massive touchscreen on the back combined with the insanely easy menu system of the Blackmagic meant that I didn't really have any issues on set just controlling what I needed to. But I do use the Sony app quite regularly when I record videos for YouTube, like I'm doing now with the A7S III. So I wanted to see what I could get for the Blackmagic. But I quickly realized that Blackmagic's own app is only designed for iOS and I am a proud Samsung fan, so obviously I could not use it. So I checked the Google Play Store for some Android alternatives. Now, the three apps that I'm gonna be comparing today are all paid apps. The only free app I could find on the Google Play Store was an app that only allows you to start and stop recordings. So it's not extremely useful unless that's all you need. So I'm gonna be testing Blackmagic Pocket Control 4K 6K, which was 28 Rand 99 or around about $2. Control Blackmagic Camera, which was 99 Rand 99, which is around $7. And Blackmagic Blue Connect, which was 124 Rand 99 or around $9. These dollar prices are estimates as I'm not sure how the Google Play Store handles currency conversions. So all of these apps handle exposure and white balance control pretty easily, except for Blackmagic Pocket Control 4K 6K, which is the cheapest one. I could not change the shutter speed for some reason. It doesn't allow me to click on it, to change it. It doesn't even change when I change it on the camera. It's also the only app that only makes the change on the camera when you let go of the slider. The other apps change in real time as you move your finger over the slider and you can see that change on the camera. For example, when changing the white balance on Control Blackmagic Camera and Blackmagic Blue Connect, it makes the change in real time on the back of the screen and you can see it changing and then you can let go when you're happy. But on Blackmagic Pocket Control, it only makes the change once you move the slider and then let go. Other than that, they're all pretty similar. So that's the first thing that I tested. Right now, I'd like to test my audience and ask if you guys would be willing to smash the like button. It really helps us out. YouTube's like, hey, let's show it to more people. And then, you know, it's a good time. So if you're enjoying this video so far, please smash the like button. Now, here's where there's a strange quirk with all three of the apps. Now, it could be that the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro is just too new and they haven't updated it, or, you know, maybe it doesn't work on other cameras. If the camera is set to RAW mode, you can change any of the RAW settings like resolution, compression, frame rate, but you cannot switch over to ProRes mode and vice versa. And similarly, if you're in ProRes mode, you can change any of the ProRes settings from HQ, 422, LT, Proxy, but you just can't change to roll. You still have to do that on the back of the camera. Another thing is that the Control Blackmagic Camera app seems to only be designed for the Pocket 4K and only the 4K in terms of resolution. Even when you're in RAW mode, you cannot select the 6K resolution. There's just not a button for it. So all of these apps have a slider to control focus on autofocus lenses. So I took our Sigma 18-35 f1.8 lens put it on the camera and tested it. But the only app that I could get this working with was the Blackmagic Blue Connect app. And that function actually works really well. You can control the speed. The only thing that's a little bit strange is that when you let go of the slider, it jumps back to the middle. So every time you want to pull focus closer or further, you always start in the middle and go up or down. If the other apps worked at all, I think I would prefer their system since it stays on the same distance when you let go of the slider. So you always know where you set your last focus point and you can more accurately and more easily know if you need to focus closer or further. But of course, those don't work at all. It is worth noting that this might only be with the Pocket 6K Pro and it might just be because it's a new camera and they just haven't updated it yet. And it might actually work perfectly on the normal 4K and 6K. I just can't test it because I don't have those cameras. 
All these apps make metadata insanely easy and convenient. You can easily add things like scene, night, day, interior, exterior, shot size, director, production, camera operator, the list goes on. This is really convenient when editing because depending on what software you're using, it's all right there on the screen so you can know when they do the next take or when they change the scene or something like that. So it's definitely a good thing that you can add to your on-set workflow. Another thing you can add to your workflow is this channel. Please hit subscribe and then share with your friends and then, you know, browse the channel. We've got a lot of videos on writing, editing, camera reviews, podcasts. Just go check it out. I'm sure you'll find something. Of course, all of these apps let you start and stop recording by pressing a button on the screen. But if that's all you need, there is a free app available called Blackmagic Camera Control, which only does that one thing, start and stop recording and nothing else. And finally, none of these videos can give you a live view of what the camera is seeing at that exact moment. So unlike the Sony app that I always use, where I can just see exactly what the camera is seeing, I cannot do that on the Blackmagic apps. For that, I use the original Axoon CineEye, which also pairs to an app, so I can easily switch between the two apps to see what I'm doing, what I'm filming, and then what I need to change on the camera. It would definitely be preferable to see it on the same screen where I change my settings so that I can see the effect on the app immediately so I don't have to switch between them. However, one of these apps does let you go into playback mode on the camera, so if you have a wireless monitor and the camera is somewhere and you need to quickly access playback, you can do that from the app. And that is the middle app, the Control Blackmagic Camera app. So that's pretty convenient as well. So which of these three apps are the best? Personally, I like the Blackmagic Blue Connect app the best. Control Blackmagic is a close second, but the only problem with it is that you can't change the resolution in raw mode to 6K and the focus also doesn't work. So in that regard, it really loses against Blue Connect. The cheapest app, Blackmagic Pocket Control 4K 6K, I don't think is actually worth it, even at its low 28 Rand 99 or $2 price. Now this app might work better on other cameras, but I'm talking specifically about the 6K Pro, in which case I would rather just fork out the extra cash to get Blue Connect. And then I know that every setting that I need is on the app. But that's just my opinion. Please feel free to test out these apps yourself and then leave a little comment down below which one you prefer. And uh, while you're down there, if you like this video, maybe smash the like button. It really helps us out. YouTube is like, oh, people like it. And then they show it to more people. And if you enjoyed this kind of content, we release new videos on filmmaking every week on editing, writing, camera reviews, podcasts. So I'm sure you'll be able to find something that you like. So please hit the subscribe button. But until next time, Go out there, stay safe, and make your moves.